I think I want to return to something, Janine, that you mentioned earlier in, in one of your comments was about the statute of limitations. And, you know, maybe that's something you and I have spent a lot of time thinking about and, you know, but some people here may not even be familiar with this idea. So could you just give us a basic idea of, you know, what is the statute of limitations for those who aren't familiar with it? What, what statutes apply to cases of sexual abuse in the state of Wisconsin? Well, first of all, I just want to explain a statute of limitation and the reason for it. Uh -huh. The reason for it is that if somebody makes a claim against someone else, the, the legislature has in lot, almost all cases decided a reasonable amount of time to make the claim is an X amount of time. And in part, it is if somebody made a claim against you from 50 years ago and where were you on Tuesday, October 15th, you'd have a very difficult time defending against it. So these statutes were really um, one of, of balancing interests in litigation. The statute of limitations in sex abuse cases often were based on when the minor, assuming it was a minor, turned 18 and there was a certain number of years afterwards. There have been substantial changes to the statute of limitations in Wisconsin. And if there's sexual abuse of a child under the age of 13, there is no statute of limitations. So the, the, plaintiff, the, the plaintiff in a case like that who's suing for damages can wait till she's 80 if she wants. I mean, I don't know why you do that, but you could wait till you're 80 to make the claim. There's no statute of limitations. If the child is older than 13 and somewhere, but yet a minor, it's uh, when the, the victim or the plaintiff turns 45. So whatever number of years between the time that the abuse happened after age 16 and until the, the victim turns 45. So those have been extended substantially and, and people have been pleased. The question in one, one and I remember, I'm sorry if it was Laura, but one of the people, that, one of the sisters talked about the window. And the window is something different. The window, and we don't have a window in Wisconsin, there's been, there have been attempts, is to say all past cases, you have two years or you have a certain amount of time that the statute of limitations won't apply and you can file it. And that's for all those older cases because if the statute of limitations ran on a case, even though now we have these longer statute of limitations, it doesn't apply. So that's one of the things when the attorney general is going to be looking at these cases, if it happened 45, 50 years ago, and the, the, the priest or whoever it was that did the abuse stayed in the state the whole time, the statute of limitations is run and you cannot bring a criminal case and you can't bring a civil case against the, um, the individual. I just want to do one more caveat, and I know I get a little legal here, but that's part of my, in my veins, is that our Supreme Court made an exception of claims on statute of limitations if the Catholic Church committed fraud by hiding the conduct. And the reason for that is that the plaintiff or the person who was injured could not have known, perhaps, that this guy was a serial abuser because the church hid it. And so it, it lengthens the time that somebody can make a claim. Um, now, many of those claims and most of those claims in the, in the big diocese have been discharged in bankruptcy. So people are not going to be filing many lawsuits. But, but in the future, there's, there is a long period of time to, to make those claims. Um, and that's why you're not going to see many, much, many cases coming out of the Attorney General's work. But hopefully some, some major systemic work can be done. <laughs> 